Oh, hey there. Well, usually this is where I try and have like a cinematic opening sequence to tease the episode, but I'm just gonna tell you if you stay till the end, I'm gonna give away one of these lenses. Welcome back to Adventure in Art. My name is Ben Staley, your resident talking head. In this episode, we're gonna talk about a couple of pretty interesting tilt lenses for L-mount. Interestingly enough, within the span of a week, I was offered the chance to review two 50 millimeter tilt lenses. I feel like that's like the universe telling me something like, that's a synchronicity, that's a coincidence. That's like something I shouldn't pass up. Am I an expert on tilt lenses? No, I am not, but I really like 50 millimeter lenses and I really like tilt shift lenses and I've never used one on an L mount camera. So I'm like, I just said yes and I'm gonna do it. And then I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to just do two at once and kind of compare them. And this kind of gives me something tangible to, to talk about besides just like, look at this footage I shot Look at these pictures I took. Here's what I think about this lens. I can actually meat and potatoes, just compare both of these. Maybe that's a little better value for you. By the way, yes, they gave me these lenses, but the opinions are my own. No money changed hands. And uh, I'm gonna tell you what I think. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, whatever. Okay, let's get into it. I've been blabbing. Do you know what tilt shift lenses are? Actually, these are not tilt shift lenses. See, I, I screwed it up already. They're just tilt lenses. So, you know, some of the, the big camera manufacturers make tilt shift lenses. They're typically used uh, for perspective control in say landscape and architectural photography to, you, you basically shift or tilt the plane of focus instead of it just being sort of horizontal at a certain distance from the lens, you can tilt the lens and make maybe a diagonal plane of focus. It's kind of interesting. This is, I think, most useful in architectural photography when you have, you know, buildings and angles and things and you want everything to be sharp. Now, typically you go with like a Canon or a Nikon tilt lens. They run in the thousands of dollars. And have I used those before? Actually, I have professionally. Am I an expert? No, but I'm mostly a filmmaker and like over a decade ago, I DP'd, director of photography, cinematographer, I DP'd a pilot for Nat Geo. And it was about, uh, it went all over the place. I shot in like, shot in Alaska, shot in Alabama. <laughs> There's a difference, shot in Washington. It was a pilot about uh, these shipyards and people who build boats and things and repair boats. So it's bouncing around all these shipyards and filming stuff. And I use tilt lenses uh, in time lapses to you know, get a big wide perspective of this shipyard and these boats that were being worked on and there's like little people moving around and I would just have a time lapse running all day and it would, you know, compress down into like six or eight or 10 seconds and you'd see the whole day and everyone working on this boat like little ants and it made, a, it made these huge boats look like toys. That was the last time I used tilt shift lenses. I wish I had some of those time lapses. Like I haven't been doing time lapses in a long time and I love doing time lapses. Should I stay on point here? I am on point. You know how I tested these lenses? I shot some time lapses. But first, let's talk about each of these. They are, yes, they're both 50 millimeter lenses, but they're actually radically different. The TT Artisan is most like a traditional tilt lens in that, you know, you can really, you know, accurately adjust the angle of tilt uh, in, what is it, in 15 degree increments. You can, you know, turn the lens uh, on the mount and then just release this little knob. Boom, boom, boom. Tilt back and forth, however much. You know, it's it feels pretty smooth and it's pretty easy to adjust and to get where you want it. I do love this metal lens cap that just kind of slides on the end. It seems to fit pretty snugly. Uh, I always love a metal custom lens cap. 
versus those kind of cheap plastic ones. I like the declicked aperture, believe it or not. I I, uh, I guess it's my Cine Roots. I prefer a declicked aperture. This lens is, it's pretty hefty. It feels, it feels weighty in the hands. I feel like this is probably just a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens and they just slapped on this tilt thing on the back. But you know what? It's cool. Now, the Aster Hori, am I saying that right? Where's the box? Aster Hori, I guess that's how you say it. What does that mean? I don't know. This lens is totally different. This reminds me way back like 12 or 13 years ago, I had an early GH camera and I bought a lens baby for it, which was almost identical to this, except it was plastic. This thing is all metal, so it just feels pretty solid. I mean, it's it's darn near the same weight as the TT Artisans. It's metal and glass. Again, metal lens cap. Pretty cool. This one screws on, so it ain't going anywhere. And a, a plastic back cap, but that's fine. Neither of these lenses are weather sealed but uh, I wouldn't expect that for the price point. Now, where this one differs from the TT Artisan is you have to turn this little thing here and that releases this sort of ball socket, which allows you to tilt the lens back and forth in like 360 degrees. This is pretty cool, but it's, it's a little, more difficult to get it right where you want. Um, once you do get it there and keeping it there, then you have to snug this back down. The aperture's declicked, it's very smooth. Focus throw is pretty short, which I would prefer on this. This lens feels and operates more like a toy to me, much like the lens baby lens that I had a long time ago was, which uh, was only plastic. This is of course metal. It feels like a fun lens or a toy lens where the TT Artisan feels more like a legit tilt lens if you're trying to do something serious. But so that's that's the overall view of them. But let's look at some footage and look at some images that these lenses have made and talk about that and see if you see any differences. And then we'll come back and we'll we'll really do a comparison. Here we go. So I thought what should I shoot to show you guys some footage from these? And I just thought, well, I'll just go back to my roots and, and do some time lapses. And so I just went out a few days ago and tried to find like a place where I could have kind of deep focus and I could really um, use that kind of perspective control, tilt function on the lens to, and really put it to effect. So here we go. This is the first place that I went, went up uh, on this kind of, there was a bridge going over this road and I just, hiked up there and uh, set up the camera. This first time lapse is with the Aster Hori. Clearly, I should have leveled the camera better. And this is with the TT Artisan. Strangely, you're gonna notice something here. They're both 50 millimeter. They're both 1.4. Until you get to the very end, I'm shooting everything wide open. It's 1.4 lens. Let's go 1.4. Let's have the shallowest depth of field possible. Let's see what that looks like. But strangely, I had exposure differences between them. And I feel like, I don't know if this is true or not. I have no way to measure it. I'm not trying to measure it. The Aster Hori always felt like it was a little brighter. I moved the camera and uh, here is a setting of a little uh, subdivision. It looks like, a, I love the car moving. It looks like a little, uh, they look like little tiny toys. And this is what's cool about tilt lenses. This is the TT Artisan. Similar shot with the Aster Hori. Notice the out of focus areas up appear a little more out of focus with this lens, almost like it's a little wider. I, I tried to get similar shots with both lenses, but you know, by the time you get the tilt dialed in and everything, they're not exact, but they're pretty close. Here's a side-by-side -side of the houses. What do you think? Which one do you like better?
Okay, I tried to do a really deep shot of these uh, houses up in the hill. You see the clouds moving. Here's a side-by-side -side of the houses up on the hill. What do you think? Okay, and then the next day, I went out earlier in the morning to the to another bridge, and uh, this bridge is all enclosed, and there's, you know, like a chain link kind of fence around it so people won't jump out onto the highway. But I thought, okay, this is an opportunity to shoot through the chain link fence and have both the road and the fence in focus. This is something you could only do with a tilt lens. Had the TT Artisan up first. Again, wide open, 1.4. It's pretty cool, I think. And the similar shot with the Aster Hori. Here's a side-by-side -side through the fence. What do you guys think? Okay, now I turned it around and I shot the other way and I am a little further back from the fence so it's easier to get it sharp. This is a kind of a cool effect. Practically, I don't know when you would use this, but I'm sure there's ways. Again, something you could only do with a tilt lens. And here's the Aster Hori. And let's do a side-by-side -side here. Well, then I got lucky and uh, this little uh, kid's soccer match showed up and I pointed the cameras at them. The clouds are moving in front of the sun and coming and going, so there's some exposure shifts. Notice on the TT Artisan, you know, the, the depth of field is a little less shallow. Interesting. Let's do a side-by-side -side of this soccer game. Okay, and then I went back to the road and just tried to blur out the fence and shoot only the highway. I crushed it a little bit because I wanted to not overexpose the road. So I, I just exposed for the, the brightest parts of the scene. Let's do a side-by-side -side of this last road shot. Okay, and then last night, I hiked way up on a hill and decided to shoot a big, wide scene of this subdivision. You can see the grass in the foreground. This is the Aster Hori up first. This is a, like a three-second interval, I think, shooting a one frame every three seconds. Here's the TT Artisan. And here is a side-by-side -side up on the hill. Then I turn the camera around, shooting down way far away. For these images, I was actually shooting at 2.8. The cool thing about these Lumix cameras is uh, in the time-lapse setting, they will compile the time-lapse right in camera. So I have a LUT assigned to the JPEGs that I'm shooting, and then I can just uh, pick the settings for the video that it pumps out, and it's all seamless. I love making time-lapses on these Lumix cameras. Okay, side-by-side side from up on the hill, what do you guys think? Okay, now it's late in the day and the sun is almost setting. There are these big electrical towers. I really like this shot. It, it's just so moody and weird and cool. I wish I had put the point of focus in a slightly different place, but that's what you, you can control that with the, uh, the tilt lens. But you know, and then here the sun went, totally went down. You can see the difference between the two of these. Uh, they're, they're both 50 millimeter tilt lenses, but the, you get quite a different image. Okay, so those are some time lapses, and then I went uh, onto my patio 
we've got this old uh, typewriter and I just thought I would show you, okay, what, what, what does this lens capture when it's not tilted? Okay, here's the Aster Hori 50 millimeter, wide open, not tilted. And here's the tilt engaged. And again, and really engaged. When you crank the Aster Hori tilt over, you get this kind of vignetting where you can actually see the edge of it, which, you know, you may or may not desire that. I don't know. I don't know what you want, but you should know that that's something that it does. Here's the TT Artisan. Again, a little wider depth of field for also being a 50 millimeter 1.4. Here's the TT Artisan tilted. So that's as testy as I'm going to get around here. Look, I'm, I'm less interested in specs and that kind of stuff and more interested in in uh, making art and, and getting creative and, and how do these things feel in your hands. You know, I will tell you, um, I thought I liked this one more. I, I guess I was just drawn to the weirdness of it and the, the weird little ball socket and it reminded me of this, again, this old lens that I used to have. Um, and I thought, ah, oh, this is more fun and kind of cool because these are both not really technical lenses, let's be honest. They're pretty inexpensive and, and not really fine-tuned, you know, photographic equipment like a like a professional level tilt lens but uh i don't know using them i kind of actually grew to like this tt artisan a little more the truth is i actually like them both i think they're cool i'd be happy to have either one of these in my bag but they're very different you know i guess one of the one of the things i that maybe the reason that i'm not drawn to this one as much it kind of irritated me in that you know Sometimes when you're taking the lens off and it's 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 sticky coming off, um, sometimes when you go to turn the lens, you know the the difference between uh, the back of the lens. Let me see if I can explain this and show you. When the lens is mounted and you just have you turn this little dial here in the front to engage the tilt. Well, oftentimes when you're trying to turn the lens out of the bayonet on the camera. You just turn this instead and then this just drops down so it's like there's just such a such a thin space in there and sometimes it's a little trickier just to get off of the camera when you're switching them out and you know they have these little kind of indentations here to give you a little bit of a grip when you're when you're taking it off or on but uh let's be honest it's still kind of hard but you know this lens is just a little over two hundred dollars um i'm actually super impressed by the build quality on each of these and honestly the images don't suck if you look really close there is definitely some purple fringing they're not tack sharp of course i was shooting them wide open so yeah there you go i'm gonna give one of these lenses away and here's how you can win one of these you have to live in the united states you have to be subscribed to the channel you have to leave me a comment down below and i want you to tell me why art is important and then tell me which of these lenses you would like to have it's your choice i'm going to go through all the comments i'm going to pick out my very favorite answer and then i'm going to send you whichever lens that you want bada bing bada boom that's it thanks for tuning into this uh little weird little review of mine i hope you liked it uh, I'll be back very soon with another photographic adventure. Have a good one, folks. Thanks for watching.